Hello guys, welcome back to Mr. Cloudbook channel. Today we are going to discuss about the continuous development. So I already prepared a PPT. So for the first five videos, uh, I will presenting in the PPT only. So after that, we are going to the hands on. So today we are going to discuss about the continuous development. So we already discussed about the DevOps part, right? DevOps is a basically a software development approach, which involves the continuous development and continuous testing continuous integration, continuous deployment, and continuous monitoring. These phases will be followed throughout the development life cycle. The very first phase of the DevOps is about the continuous development. Today we are going to discuss about the continuous development. Complete DevOps phase is basically divided into seven stages, plan, coding, build, test. After the test, we integrate our tested code with our existing code and deploy it on our either testing server or production server. After this, we will operate the code and monitor the code and again it comes to bug fixes and the development. So this is the flow, the tools, what we are using from the DevOps point of view. So in the development, we use Git and Subversion and GitLab and we are also using Jira as a bug tracking tool. So basically, uh, these are the five stages of DevOps lifecycle. Very first stage is about continuous development, continuous testing continuous integration, continuous deployment, and continuous monitoring. We are going to discuss each and every phase in detail, but first we will start with the continuous development. To understand the continuous development in detail way, I have divided these particular DevOps lifecycle phases and the tasks. So planning and code is the part of the continuous development and build and test is under the continuous testing. After that uh, test, we will integrate the tested code with the build after that we will integrate the tested build code with the existing code it's called continuous integration and deployment and operating part comes to the continuous deployment or uh, sorry this is development uh, by mistake so i will change it to devil deployment and finally the monitoring comes under the part of the continuous monitoring so after the monitoring we find some bugs and it again goes to the continuous development so again it will come to plan and coding stage that is continuous development so this is the infinite loop where we are building new product and we are incorporating new features in every sprint. So we will discuss about the continuous development in detail and what is continuous development. So continuous development is a phase which involves the planning and coding of software application functionality. So you remember we already discussed about the waterfall model in the previous video. In the waterfall model, there were drawbacks like we need to plan, then we need to code, and then we need to test, and then we need to maintain the code. However, there we have a lot of lot of kinds of documentation. We need to do complete requirement gathering. So we need to do complete requirement gathering, and everything will take some time in the waterfall model. But with the DevOps, here we divided the complete product in small, small chunks and they will deliver the product future wise. We are not delivering the complete product in as a single release. We have the planning and we call this planning as a sprint planning and a sprint have two weeks or three, or three weeks duration. So basically we are delivering a part of a lecture or a complete future in a DevOps life cycle in a single sprint or in a two sprints. So you have the very frequent release when you are basically working with the DevOps phases. Either you have single release every month or every two months or you have weekly releases as well. So the planning and coding is comes into the continuous development phase. We will in this sprint planning, we will plan that work we have to do or need to be done in the particular sprint. And in that sprint, we will do that. The version of the product is decided during the planning phase. And when we are basically releasing the product, so we are releasing the product in small release. So we need to define a version of every release. Suppose, uh, for example, uh, you are going to release a product for the first time in the market, then your release will be the 1.0. After a month, you are going to release a new feature in a product, then that will be 1.1. And after that release, we will be 1.2 and goes on. So code can then be done in any language. It is the decision of your organization or the decision of the development teams. 
so we are not going to done or we are not going to decide that thing so in which language and which programming language you are going to use because single application can use the multiple programming languages it is not a straight away that is a single application can only use the only php or only one language uh, the different different of futures use the different languages a single application can use multiple languages for multiple tasks but uh, we need to maintain that code with the help of the version control system so we will discuss about the version and version controlling system we will version our code which we are releasing in every spin so we will discuss about the version control system in upcoming videos first we will discuss about the core versioning is important so what are the reasons for the maintained to hold a single source of application when we are doing the versions basically we are merging our code in our integration branch or you can say in our application code let's take a scenario you are not versioning your code so we are not using our git and github so what will happen so just we just created a one branch on our uh, application for the 1.0 on version control system pushing every code in that particular branch and one day you got to know that three days before or a week before we pushed some incorrect code in the production so how can you roll back that particular code so if you are using the version control system and you are using the versioning of your code and then you need to know that which version of the build was working fine and which version of build is not working fine so simply if we can roll back your code to the previous version right so if we use the version numbers we can roll back with the particular version of code so simply we can roll back our code with the previous version so which is causing the errors that's why we need to use the version numbers for our application with the new releases or with whenever we release a new feature so that's why we are going to use the centralized single source code operations can be accessed by the same code what they plan to release so with the help of the versional control system we can use the centralized code repository and operations can use the same code what they plan to release this is the very simple and easy to roll out and fully snippet of the code and the whatever the code the development team using the same code will be used by the operation system uh, so that we can uh, release our applications very fastly if you are using the version so we are discussed we simply roll out or roll back the faulty code in easy way so where devops come into the picture in their continuous development we are talking about the versioning of our code the tool which we are going to use or we can say that most popular tool of the version control system is git and github so git is a tool and github is a repository so we are going to use git and github for the version control system and the very second section of this particular course we will describe all things from a to z about the git and github so this is the simplest diagram where i have described the distributed versional control system so on our server we have a single repository where all my code is placed right so in the single repository i placed my code so different different of the engineers and developers pull the code so so they can do the changes and they can commit the changes to the repository in the staging area and in the workstation so where we can change the code we can update and we can do test the everything in the working copy and we will push that copy to the repository this is the staging area and we will push it to the main server so this is the main repository so we are pushing the code to first to the staging after testing the working copy so this is a complete process if your working copy is lost and you can again pull it from the main server so this is the process of the distributed version control system so the continuous development process will be done with the version control system yeah, so we are going to discuss about this in the future videos so this is all about the continuous development thanks for watching the video and we are going to discuss about the continuous testing in the next video keep on supporting to mr cloudbook channel